uh, good evening everyone let's begin uh, today's sessions and i will be doing a little bit of housekeeping and uh, introduction to the workshop in this first session after which we will uh, go ahead with the core uh, sessions for today i welcome all of you for uh, joining this session on workshop on biostatistics which we call dumb numbers in this particular session in the next 30 minutes i'm going to introduce the workshop to you to begin i would uh, like to acknowledge and thank our partners and supporters so this workshop is being done as a golden jubilee celebration workshop of the university college of medical sciences that's the institution where i work the college completes 50 years of its institution and uh, we are celebrating the golden jubilee year this year the workshop is supported by the indian academy of geriatrics the research wing student chapter and the journal of the Ge indian academy of geriatrics the workshop is also supported by the association of gerontology india university respati indonesia the stata corporation which has allowed us uh, to use a stata software for the entire month in which we will be having this workshop and also the united states india education foundation or the usief in delhi which has uh, helped us get some faculty members on this workshop i would now invite uh, the participants one by one to introduce themselves so i am going in uh, alphabetical order and i would first invite dr asha tyagi i'm a professor in anesthesia and critical care medicine and uh, i have an active interest in medical research i find it extremely satisfying and challenging and um, i hope i get to know uh, you people more and we can interact over the next couple of week weeks on wednesday thank you Thank you, Dr. Asha. Next, we have Chanavir Bamigati. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I am Dr. Chanavir Appa. Um, I am additional professor of medicine at Jipmer Puducherry. Uh, I am not so good in uh, statistics. That is why I am uh, attending this workshop. But uh, we have done some uh, RCTs and uh, few other studies. so i would like to uh, learn more about uh, statistics and other things thank you thanks chenna we have ia darling tea wash hello uh, good evening sir uh, i'm uh, ia darling tea so i'm from nigrims uh, shillong meghalaya i'm presently assistant professor in general medicine and i've to join this workshop because of the fact that uh, i'm also very weak in uh, biomedical statistics and being a assistant professor i'm teaching the undergraduate so i feel i should know the basics and the importance of bio statistics and i feel this will be uh, a great benefit to um, my present um, position thank you thank you yada dr nishad plakal i am nishad i'm a neonatologist uh, i work at uh, jipmer pondicherry uh we uh, are very actively involved in research since we are an academic institution but uh, i think uh, some a more intuitive understanding of uh, statistical tests uh, would be very good for us because uh, we don't we are not formally trained in biostatistics uh, yet we work uh, with statistics all the time it is very nice to meet all of you thank you thank you thank you nishad Paramita Datta. I am uh, Dr. Paramita Datta. I am an assistant professor in ophthalmology at Guru Nanak Eye Center, Malanagar Medical College. I participated uh, uh, in the previous uh, workshop and I found it uh, helped me gain confidence in statistics. And I hope this second workshop uh, improves on my understanding and uh, helps me be more uh, independent. thank you thank you dr paramita on your uh, faith in us and uh, support to us thank you we have pardana aditya uh, i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly uh, pardana yeah thank you uh, nice to meet you all uh, i am pardana aditya you can call me adi i'm from indonesia actually it's 7 uh, o'clock pm here uh, so uh, i am currently an internal medicine specialist uh, majoring rheumatology uh, and then uh, i expect to get 
uh, more knowledge on <laughs> biostatistics and actually uh, Stata is quite <clears throat> unfamiliar here for most Indonesian. Uh, most of us uh, using uh, SPSS for the tools, but uh, and I, I found uh, it's going to be interesting for us to learn something new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Perdana. Next, we have Dr. Rashmi Salhotra. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Dr. Rashmi Salhotra. I am an anesthesiologist in UCMS. And uh, I was knowing about this workshop, but somehow I was the last one to register today. Uh, Actually, I'm very interested in biostatistics and my previous exposure to this is only limited to whatever I have done in my undergraduation days. And I keep forgetting and then all the time when I have to uh, kind of uh, go through the statistical analysis part of the students, I feel that I lack this and I have no understanding of that. So I thought that this workshop would give me a good platform uh, for learning and uh, it will help me in my research as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. We have a Richa Mittal. Hello, sir. Good evening. I am uh, Dr. Richa Mittal. I'm a pediatrician looking after the pediatric gastroenterology services in uh, Safdarjung Hospital at present. And last time also I had attended uh, this uh, conference, this workshop, it was a great experience. And I really enjoyed working up in groups and uh, doing the practical exercises. So I really want, uh, I'm looking forward to see this as an opportunity to revise and uh, reapply uh, all the knowledge which was gained. It was very comprehensive last time also, and it was very, very helpful. So I'm looking forward to learning and revising my concepts of biostatistics in this workshop again this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you again for your uh, faith in us. And I'm sure you will get enough chance to work in more groups this time. But the uh, working in groups will be a little difficult, from, uh, different from last time. We will be working in online groups and smaller groups. We have Dr. Saurabh Murthy. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Saurabh Murthy. I'm a transfusion medicine physician at AIMS Gorakhpur. Uh, I am relatively naive at uh, all the tools of bio uh, medical ethic. Uh, this sorry, uh, statistics. So I am keenly interested in work, uh, uh, learning these tools from you. Uh, that is all from my side. Thank you, uh, Doctor Sora. I am Doctor Sora I am working yes. as HOD medicine in Government Institute of Medical Sciences, and uh, I had not a very good knowledge of stats so i wanted to have this workshop so that uh, i can do research and guide our students better thank you thank you thank you. thank you thank you doctor sir so we have a, a totally skewed uh, participant list because there are nine participants whose names are starting with the letter s so i invite the third in the category dr shrihan silva he's joining from sri lanka hello good evening to all of you uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity of uh, joining this uh, workshop. Uh, I'm from Colombo. I'm a physician, geriatrician, um, and I'm a senior lecturer in a medical school called University of Sri Jawadhanapura. Uh, Dr. Ashish has been a frequent uh, visitor uh, to our country with regards to the Geriatric Association. And we thank, I thank uh, Dr. Ashish for inviting uh, us and uh, uh, informing us about this program. I'm, I hope that I would learn uh, much more about statistics as I am interested in research. All the best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Shrihan, for joining. We have Dr. Smita Nath. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Smita Nath. I, ha I have joined as assistant professor in medicine at UCMS New Delhi. I think uh, not enough uh, emphasis is laid on uh, biomedical research and biostatics uh, and uh, which hampers our academic growth. So I hope to fill that lacunae and improve myself in the field of biostatics. Thank you. Thank you, Smita. We have uh, Dr. Suman Lata. Yeah, good evening, everyone. And first of all, I am very thankful to Ashish for giving me opportunity to attend this workshop. I am a nephrologist and working with Narayana Health Group Delhi. And I believe this workshop is a springboard and it will give us opportunity to improve my skills as far as statistics or designing a good study is concerned. Thank you, Ashish and team for giving me opportunity. 
Thank you. Thank you, Suman, for joining. We have Dr. Sumita Halder. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Sumita, professor in the Department of Pharmacology, University College of Medical Sciences. And uh, I had attended the previous workshop also, and I had found it very useful. So uh, I hope that I learn more about biostatistics in this workshop and obviously uh, brush up my knowledge of startup. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sumita. And hopefully we will be able to keep up our promise on this workshop too. We have uh, Susaina Nugraha from Indonesia again. Okay, good evening, everyone. And good evening, Dr. Asis. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you again here. And, and also thank you so much for you and your team for giving me this uh, valuable opportunity. I'm Susiana Nugraha. I'm working for Center for Family and Aging Study, University, is, uh, University of Respati, Indonesia. And I my recent joining with this uh, Workshop is because uh, I engage with a lot of research in community-based gerontology. So I want to brush up my statistical skill and I want to improve my confidence in per uh, performing statistical analysis. And also Stata is quite a new thing for me and I hope I can le learn a lot of things from here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susiana. And we have uh, Dr. Venkates for an hour. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Venkat, uh, working in the medical ICU at the Department of Medicine at JIPMER. So uh, I'm an associate professor here, so involved in teaching. So we are a bit familiar with the basic statistics, but always when it comes to analysis, I miss out on the nitty gritties and how to clean up the data. So that is always shaky. So I hope this advanced course will help us. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ashish and the team for giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Venkat. Uh, so these were our 20 participants on this workshop. We are going to be together for the next month. We have one special entry participant. Uh, that's Urvashi. She's a student, but she requested and uh, we have invited her to join the workshop. Urvashi, would you introduce yourself? Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Urvashi. I'm a third year medical student in uh, RRMCH Bangalore. Um, I wanted to learn about uh, biostatistics so that I can perform my own research projects in UG and PG days. So thank you for allowing me to attend this workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Urvashi. They say that the early bird catches the worm and uh, we are sure that you will definitely have the worms lined up for you. Uh, let me also introduce you to the faculty. Dr. Alden Gross is a professor of biostatistics and epidemiology at Johns Hopkins. Dr. Amir Maruf is on the workshop and I request Dr. Maruf to introduce himself directly. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Amir. Uh, I am a faculty in community medicine uh, department at University College of Medical Sciences. Uh, this particular uh, workshop is uh, very exciting because it's an advanced workshop and uh, some of you have already attended the basic workshop earlier so it will be good to learn together uh, in this uh, advanced uh, course thank you thank you very much thank you amir uh, we have dr arun sharma who is a professor of community medicine at university college of medical sciences we have uh, myself i'm ashish goel i'm a professor of medicine at university college of medical sciences and I will be with you throughout the workshop. We have Adeba Priyo Chakravarti, who will join us from France. We have uh, John McGreedy, who is a professor of biostatistics at Johns Hopkins again. We have Kamakshi Bansal. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Kamakshi Bansal. I'm a third year medical student at University College of Medical Sciences, Delhi. And I feel lucky to be getting so much statistical exposure in the early days of my career and I know it will go a long way. So thank you for having me. Yeah, some of you might be thinking that uh, what will a uh, MBBS student teach us about statistics on a workshop which is exclusively for faculty members. Uh, but Kamakshi has shown considerable promise over the last uh, few years that she's been working with us. And I'm she sure she will do justice uh, to her a new role in instructing faculty members in, uh, in biostatistics. 
next right. on the list, we have Karen Bandin Roche. So Karen is the professor and the chair of the Department of Biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. And she will be talking about competing risks on, Feb, uh, on March 3rd. Yes, she will be taking the session on competing risks analysis. We will have Marie Diener West, who is the chair of the Masters of Public Health program at Johns Hopkins. She will be talking more on uh, logistic regression analysis. And we have Nidhi Bhatnagar. So Nidhi is a professor at uh, of the Jung Hospital. And uh, she will be uh, joining us for the session during the workshop. We have uh, Dr. Shalaja Yadav. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Shalaja Yadav. I'm a second year postgraduate student in Department of Community Medicine here at University College of Medical Sciences. I really look forward to this opportunity. I am both a teacher as a PG resident. I'm both a teacher and a student of statistics. So I look forward to this exciting opportunity. And I hope that the way I have cleared my doubts in biostatistics by focusing on the basics, I can help you do the same with your workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shailaja. There are some faculty members whom you will not meet during the workshop but have prepared a video content which we will be sharing with you subsequently in these subsequent sessions. And I will name them. We have Arnold Onana. We have Dr. Arvind Mathur. We have Atul Aravindaksham. We have Dr. Krishna Rao. We have Lin Bui, Lina Lee, Dr. Naganath Prem, Dr. Tung Pham, and Dr. Yusuf Farag. Some of them or most of them are my colleagues from Johns Hopkins and uh, they have made video content on specific subject. And as and when you get time, you can go through these videos, which are short videos, but will be helpful in clearing most of your basic concepts. A schedule which has already been circulated is like this. At the end of this workshop, you will or you should know how to set up your data. You would know how to run the analysis on Stata. You would know how to interpret the output. You would know how to report the results. You would be able to interpret the reported statistics in journal articles, and you would know how to talk to a statistician. You would become a little more familiar with the new software. What you should not expect from this workshop, well, you will not become a statistician. We will not be discussing any equations in this workshop and you may still need to associate with a statistician. You would need to install Stata. You would need to download and install the software GPower and Power and Sample Size, that's PNS. We have shared the links with you already, and I hope you have already become familiar with the software and have downloaded them. So today's session on basics, we will be covering four aspects. Immediately after I stop speaking, Dr. Amir will talk about study design. Dr. Shelija will talk about tests of hypothesis. And uh, Kamakshi will talk about correlation analysis. Uh, we have shared some additional sessions with you. And uh, these video links are there in the booklet that we have shared. These are introduction to biostatistics, exploratory data analysis, tables and figures, hypothesis testing, correlation analysis, regression analysis, reliability and validity, confounding and bias, and ROC analysis. So most of these we will not be covering in this particular workshop. And if you want to brush up your basics on these, then it's a good idea to look at these particular sessions. We will have a session on hypothesis testing today, but there is also a video available on the links on hypothesis testing, and you're welcome to look at that. In addition, we are happy to provide on-demand sessions. So if you have any particular topics or areas that you would like to be covered, please feel free to write to us or let us know or post on the group, and we will try and develop those and uh, also share with you on these on-demand sessions. So the session on sample size, we will be sharing a two hour video in advance with you, which is a detailed, as detailed a video on sample size that, that you would need. Definitely you would not need mostly for your research, anything more than this. And you will not probably find anything better than this on sample size on any internet that you search for. 
two softwares will be used during this session. That will be G Power and PNS. The PNS software, this uh, my, this PowerPoint, I will share with you. The links to these softwares where you can download them are available on this. The PNS sample soft size or the sample size software has got a unique advantage that it gives you whatever you have to write in your proposal as a paragraph. It writes that paragraph for you and gives it to you as it is. So you just need to copy and paste it into your proposal in your sample size calculation. So although I said that uh, we will not be discussing any equations with you, but I will be the first one to break my rule and go into an exception. So here is my first and only equation that I will talk to you about on this course. Nice. This equation, if you remember your elementary mathematics from class 10, is the equation of a straight line, which is y is equal to mx plus c. And this is all that you need to know to understand any kind of regression. This is the only basic equation that if you recognize and if you know this equation, and as Venkat also pointed out, that this is the equation where the letter M denotes the slope of the line and C is the intercept, where Y and X are two variables. If you know this, you know your regression and you don't need to know anything else beyond this. If I go beyond this, they change the C into beta naught and they change the M into beta one. And this equation starts looking like Y is equal to beta naught plus beta one X one. That's the simplest equation that you can. And if you can remember, you will know regression in and out without any other need to know anything else. The only next thing that you need to remember is what is Y. So if a linear regression is being done, y is a continuous variable. You get to the interpretation of beta one. So that is the entire exercise that what is beta one that we are trying to calculate whenever we are doing a linear regression. But y, the determinant of y or what is y will determine what is the kind of regression that is being done. If it's linear regression, y is a continuous variable. That's all I want to know, want you to know for linear regression at this point of stage. Next is logistic regression. The equation remains the same in, in a broad term, although this is log of y or whatever. But the important thing that I want you to remember at this point is the equation remains the same, but the nature of y changes. In logistic regression, y is a dichotomous variable where the answer is zero or one, yes or no. Does this happen or does this not happen? When the Y can take only two um, different values of zero and one, we do a logistic regression. That's all that I need you to remember for logistic regression. Then we talk about Cox proportional regression or Cox proportional hazards. Again, the equation remains the same in its broadest term but y changes here, y is the time to event. If a patient is hospitalized on day one and dies on day eight, then that eight is the time period from the point of reference to the point of the event. And this time to event is the y when we have a Cox proportional hazards model. This is what changes, this is what y changes and that is all that is changing here. This again becomes survival time analysis or time to event analysis. All these are same things, Cox proportional hazards, time to event analysis or a survival time analysis. Then we have a competing risks analysis. The only thing at this point of time that I want you to remember again is uh, what is a competing risk. If you are trying to look at what is the chance that a person died of a stroke, then if he dies of a heart attack, then that is a competing risk that he can die of a heart attack or he can die of a stroke. Once he dies of a stroke, he can't die of a heart attack. That means that two things that are driving the event 
are competing with each other in terms of risks. So this is one of the newest concepts in stats. Not many people are doing this. Not many people are able to do this. Karen will be talking on competing risks on 10th, but this is the only one line that I would like you to remember. The two risks are driving the event. If one happens, the other cannot happen. That is in a nutshell, what is competing risks? If you know that, you know competing risk analysis. We will talk about more about meta-analysis because that's the key thing and most of you would know a little bit already about meta-analysis. So at this point of time, these are the sessions that we are going to do over the next few weeks and that's where I rest. In the methodology, we will be talking about, in each session, we will be devoting about a 20-minute recorded session on introduction in which we will talk about when we need to do a particular statistic, when not to do a particular statistic, and what are the assumptions that are necessary to be fulfilled when you can apply a particular model. We will give you a demonstration on Stata on how to do this. And the most important thing in that will be how do you interpret what Stata throws back at you? So it will give you an output, but we will try and deliver together what is the interpretation of this output? We'll have a do-it-yourself exercise. We'll have a journal in which we will pick up an article, focus you to read a particular area where this particular statistic has been recorded, and then we will have a live question and answer session. If you are keen and willing, we can have a longer question and answer session at the expense of any of the other sessions. But the more you utilize the faculty, the more you will gain out of this workshop. So I have already covered what we will do in introduction, demonstration, exercise, journal, and your assignments. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and uh, I am going to talk about the group formation, the groups that are going to be the breakout groups. Please take note of your individual group and you will be doing the assignments within your group over the next week. So group one will have Dr. Shelaja Yadav as the faculty lead, and the members of this group would be Susiana, uh, Paramita, Saurabh Murthy, and Neha Verma. Group two will have Kamakshi as the facilitator, and we will have Dr. Nishad Plakal, Dr. Sumanlata, Dr. Rashmi, and Dr. Aditya Pardana. For group three, I will be facilitating any discussion required, and we will have uh, Dr. Venkateswaran, Dr. Uh, Sri Sunarthi, Dr. P.C. Gilvaz, and Richa Mittal. For group four, we will have Dr. Nidhi Bhatnagar, who's now on the meeting, and uh, we will have in this group we will have Dr. Sushant Shinde, Dr. Asha Tyagi, Shehan Silva, and Dr. Sumita Haldar. In group five, we will have Dr. Amir Maruf as the facilitator, and the group will have Dr. Chanavir, Dr. Yada, Dr. Saurabh Srivastav, Dr. Smita Nath, and Urvashi. So these groups have been formed based on some common interest that all of you had indicated in the Google form that you had filled. So one of the exercises for this week is going to be to find out what was the common interest that binds these groups together or have allowed us to put you in these groups together, including the facilitator. So this is based on what you had entered on the Google form. So we are going to wind up here and uh, stop this session today. But before I uh, stop, just last five minutes on this, please don't get confused by the names that are used for variables. Outcome variable has been called by different names. It could be dependent, it could be response variable, predicted variable, explained variable, regression. Predictor variables have been called by different names, but they mean the same thing. The Ys are your outcome variables and the Xs are your predictor variables. They could be called the independent variables. They could be called exposure variables. They could be called covariates. They could be called risk factors. 
they could be called explanatory variables they could be called regressors so do not get confused when you are hearing or finding these different words in different publications that's one aspect that i wanted to highlight here the next thing that i wanted to tell you was that when you are trying to become familiar with data and once you have downloaded data and you are trying to figure out how to understand data there are some resources which i would highly recommend for data there is a data corporation youtube channel which is got chuck huber presenting a lot of videos which are available on youtube there are many other videos available but i would advise and strongly recommend that you view stata corp channel by chuck huber himself or if you want to go to an alternate channel and for some reason do not like chuck huber then an alternate channel which i have found very useful is the university of california south florida which is ucsf where we have amy pen who's presenting the videos and they are uh, uh, reasonably well done so here is a link to the stata interface video which i would recommend that you do take a look if you can see my screen it will lead you to the stata channel by chuck huber so here are the assignments for this week i will share this slide on on your uh, group also assignment number 1 you download stata pns and g power if you have problems discuss within the smaller groups that we had constructed i will again send that on the group itself you can watch these introductory and basic videos some of them maybe uh, you look at which topic you want to watch and watch that particular topic you will not be able to and do not even try to watch all the introductory videos that we have shared with you number 3 uh, watch the stata videos at least the three of them that i linked up to on the previous slide these particular three the stata interface getting started and a quick tutorial these are 10 minute videos each so total of 30 minutes you will be able to get familiar with stata quickly then there are the class data set you had already submitted a google form in which you had submitted a lot of data we will be using the excel sheet generated from that google form will be shared on the whatsapp group use this particular data set this particular excel sheet to answer the following questions your exercises for this week will be to import the class data set into the stata number 1 number 2 to run code book describe and summary commands these you will find in the first video that i was referring to number 3 draw a histogram for age of the participants number 4 check if age is different between the males on this workshop and the females on this workshop number 5 check if reading as a hobby is more common in males or in females number 6 is there a correlation between height and weight of the participants and number 7 is there a correlation between the age and years of the experience this looks too much when you look at it but it is not really too much once you get a hang of it you will be able to do these in 5 minutes once you get a hang of it let me also introduce you in the next 2 minutes to the stata window when you will download stata and start stata on your computer this is how stata will look like these are the 1 2 3 4 and 5 windows in stata the one on the left is called the history window it gives the history of all the commands that you have given this black window appears black in my computer will appear white in your computer this is the results window here the result will come the bottom window is the command window which will have all the commands that you have listed will come here 
the command that you are giving now will be appearing here. This window on the right is all the variables that are there in your data will appear here and the properties of the variable will appear here. You really don't need this properties window, but you do need the history results command and variable window. I will import this. If you look at the steps and follow me carefully for the next three minutes, your exercises or the answers for the class work or the assignments is already what I'm going to do here. So you go to file, go on to import and import the Excel sheet that you have downloaded from the class. Depends upon where you have saved it. If you have it in your downloads, like I have, I open it. It asks me whether I want to import the first row as variable names. Yes, my first row is my variable names. I check that box. It asks me whether the variable case, that means the name cup first letter or names first letter is capital. Do I want to preserve it like that? I say, no, I want it to be in a lower case. Do these two while you are importing the data, it helps. And I click OK. So now what has happened is, you see the command that we gave has appeared here. This was the command. So it has appeared here, although we did not use the particular command here, but we did it from the drop down menu. The command appears here. What data did has appeared here. That's the results window. And all the variables that we had in our data set have appeared here. So now if I want to see what is the summary of age or what is the age of the participants, I will give a command summarize age. And with that command, it tells me that there are 20 participants who have submitted the data. The mean age of the participants is 41.2. The standard deviation is 8.28. Minimum was 25. Maximum age is 67 among the participants. The command that I gave has appeared in the command window. If I wanted to see the histogram, I just type histogram age. And when I click enter, it will give me the histogram of the age distribution of all the participants. So here is the age distribution of all the participants. We have the maximum number of people in the 40 age group. And that is all that it takes to make a histogram. And that is all that it takes to summarize the age of the individuals. The command for summarizing is summarize. For making a histogram is histogram. For doing a, a code book, which I told you, Again, a simple code book. It will give code book of all the variables that are there in my data set. If I ask it to describe by typing describe, it will describe all the variables that are there in my data set. If I type summarize, it will summarize all the variables that are there in the data set. So these are also the exercises that I have listed for you and the answer is also there in the exercises. I have just now actually demonstrated what is needing to be done. If you are trying to correlate the age with the number of years, again, it's simple, C-O-R-R -R for correlate. That's the spelling of correlate, correlate, C-O-R-R, -R, age. And the other we wanted to see is the years of experience people have had after completing their MD, which was another question. So when I do this and I click enter, it gives me the correlation coefficient, which is here 0 0.86, which is a very good correlation. And obviously, as it would have been expected, the coefficient is 0 0.8602 between years of experience and age. So that's how you do the correlation. So once you start doing it and playing around with the software, you'll get more uh, accustomed to it. And that's, that's about all that we have for uh, today's session. So thank you, Shalaja. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Kamakshi. I'm sorry for having uh, not brought you on. And uh, we will have more sessions in the coming days. Uh, 
and thank you everyone else thank you shehan pardana paromita and uh, richa thank you nidhi urvashi dr asha and uh, dr amir thank you